Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name's Sam and I'm here today with four tips on choosing vocabulary in the CELPIP speaking task. Now, as you are most likely aware, in CELPIP speaking, your performance is evaluated based on a number of criteria, which include the content and coherence, the listenability, the task fulfillment, and of course, the vocabulary. So, if your choice of vocabulary and the words that you use in your response are going to form one-fourth of your score, it's important that we think carefully about which words to use, how to use those words accurately, how to add to the range of vocabulary and the variety of words that we're using, and also how to show the examiner that we are able to use the words in a very natural and appropriate way. Because that's what you need to do to guarantee yourself a CLB 10 plus score in CELPIP speaking. All right, I have four pieces of advice that we are going to review together to help you succeed on the day of your test. Tip number one, don't use big words. Now, there is this false belief among students that if you use rare words, low frequency words, words that are big, words that are formal, you're gonna get a higher score. But what you need to understand is that there is a difference between spoken vocabulary and written vocabulary. Spoken words are the kinds of words that we hear in everyday spoken English, while written words are those that are not so commonly used in spoken English and you are more likely to see them written down on the page. It's important to remember that the examiner is looking for a natural sounding response that includes words that you expect to hear from someone who is speaking English, not fancy words that only belong in writing. For example, in part two, where you're supposed to talk about a personal experience, it's very likely that you want to talk about remembering things. Now, let's look at an expression that you might use in this part of the test. The expression is to rekindle memories. The word rekindle is a very low frequency word that we normally don't hear a lot in spoken English, but you may see it a lot when you're reading books or newspapers or articles. Is this an appropriate word to use? Well, you could use it, but a more common expression for spoken English would be bring back memories. So, if you think about it, the expression to bring back a lot of memories is more natural, it is more expected in spoken English, it is not out of place, and it is generally a very suitable expression for this part of the test. So remember, don't waste your time and energy learning big words that only belong in writing. Instead, focus on expressions that are more commonly expected in spoken English. Moving on to tip number two, focus on collocations. Now, what is a collocation? A collocation is a series of words or terms that are frequently used next to or close to each other. Some examples include crystal clear, safe and sound, neat and tidy. Native speakers often use these expressions close to each other because it makes them sound more natural and fluent. You should also try to use collocations as much as you can in different parts of the CELPIP speaking test. Let's take a look at a collocation that you might use in part two of the CELPIP speaking test talking about a personal experience. Let's say you're talking about your memories and you have a memory that you like. Of course, you could use the phrase, a good memory. But the problem is that the word good is a generic word. It's an adjective that can be used with lots of other words. For example, a good idea, a good job, a good result. However, compare this to the combination fond memories. 
The words fond and memory are very frequently used next to each other, which is why we say they form a collocation. And therefore, it is a much better combination compared to just saying good memories. So as you can see, using these types of collocations in your speaking can really help you sound natural and fluent in your response. Tip number three use idiomatic language. Now, regardless of what language you speak, you've probably noticed that in spoken English, people tend to use colorful language, full of metaphors, full of imagery, full of symbols. And English is no exception. For example, when talking about past memories, we could use the expression to recall memories, or we could say something like, memories came flooding back to me. As you can see, the second option is more natural sounding and this is an expression that you don't generally expect from lower level language learners who either don't know such idiomatic expressions at all or don't have it in their active knowledge of vocabulary so never end up using it. Remember, if you know idiomatic phrases and expressions, make sure you put them to good use as it can really help boost your lexical score on the speaking test. Tip number four, narrow your focus. Some language learners, when they are preparing for CELPIP, they learn a very long list of vocabulary. Sometimes they learn hundreds or thousands of words. They spend time and energy learning these long lists of words. And a lot of the time they go through numerous books trying to make a list of vocabulary to use on the day of the test, only to be disappointed on the day of the test because they come out without using a percentage of those words that they have spent so much time trying to learn. It's important for you to keep in mind that you should select words based on how useful they will be on the day of the test. Smart learners are learners who learn efficiently. They are the ones who learn words that are very likely to be used on the day of the test. For example, think of the expression a photographic memory. You might learn this expression hoping to use it on the day of the test. But think about it. How likely are you to talk about a photographic memory? You might end up talking about it, but this expression doesn't necessarily lend itself to talking about a personal experience. A more suitable alternative for this part of the test is, if my memory serves me well. This expression is commonly used whenever we're trying to remember something that happened in the past. And that's what you are supposed to do in part two of the test. You're supposed to talk about past events. Therefore, this expression is very likely to come in handy when you are talking about past experiences. So as you can see, by learning the first expression, a photographic memory, you may be wasting a lot of time and energy because the chance of you using this expression on the day of the test is not very high. Whereas, if you learn the expression, if my memory serves me well, you are more likely to use it on the day of the test. Now, you might be wondering, where can I find a list of such words? The good news is that on this channel, I've prepared a series of advanced tutorials that include a list of language boosters for each part of the exam. Language boosters are phrases and expressions that are ideal for spoken English. These include impressive collocations, idiomatic language that help you sound natural, and expressions that lend themselves very well to each part of the exam. These expressions have been specifically handpicked for each part of the CELPIP speaking test. They are designed to increase your lexical range and can help you sound very natural and fluent on the day of your test. You can find these advanced tutorials on my channel. You can watch parts one and two for free right now by clicking on the links below. You can access all tutorials by becoming a member of this channel. There is a separate specialized video for each section of the test. 
Each video includes advice on how to manage your time and take efficient notes. My comprehensive templates cover the whole response and not just how to start and end each part of the exam. Each advanced video tutorial includes customized language boosters so you can save time and focus on practicing instead of wasting a lot of time trying to find words and making a list of them yourself. Each video contains a model answer that shows you how to use these language boosters in grammatically sound sentences and with an accurate pronunciation. With these advanced tutorials and language boosters, you can rest assured that your response will stand out and that you will maximize your score on the day of the test. Good luck.